Let's turn now to the question of when you look at an organization's culture and what's going on there in terms of these soft skills and how people, the individuals that are in, in the organization, how they're reacting to their environment, whether it supports the intentions of the organization, what you're trying to accomplish, or perhaps impedes them. Um, let's talk a little bit about what cultures look like. There, there's Some organizations have an extremely strong culture, which means the values are deeply rooted. Um, everyone speaks in the same language. They feel the same way about their organization. When I first joined the phone company, it was uh, South Central Bell in New Orleans. Everyone talked about service. They talked about working through hurricanes, keeping the phone lines up. It was a very important cultural element that the service, the, um, the phone company was about service. Phones worked even when electricity was down, and everyone talked about it and felt it was very important. All the policies were doctor documented. There were books and everything. Of course, there's a lot of expense associated with that, but the culture of service and of bringing service up and how important it was to provide phone service to people was an important part of the value system, and it was reflected in decisions that everyone made in terms of how, how you decided what to do. If it was service was first, Profits were second in the case of the culture in the phone company at that time. Other cultures can have much weaker cultures where you just go to work. People are different. I mean, sometimes when you think about it, you go to a grocery store or something, you see the people working there. Some of them look like they're having a good time. Some of them look like they're very conscientious. Some are just killing time. Some are high school students. Nothing wrong with high school students, but they're not really invested in the firm. You know, not necessarily... Um, uh, a, a core set of values that everybody lives and everybody in, in, internalizes. Right? So you can have positive or negative, um, or not negative, but strong or weak cultures. It's sort of a different dimension. Um, and you have to decide whether or not which kind of culture you're trying to create and which kind of culture you're embedded in and whether or not it's, it's not only strong but healthy or not. So let's talk about the kinds of cultures that are good for strategy execution and those that are not so good. In terms of a healthy culture, you want a performance culture. That is, people want to achieve things. They want to succeed. They want to sell. They want to have good products. They want to have the best product. They have a high performance commitment. In other words, everybody that's in there wants to get things done. They want to get things done. They want to do them fast. They want to do them well. They want it to be the best. And they work really hard at it. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, you also want cultures that they realize that what they're doing now might change in the future, and they're willing to try something new. So they have to be have to feel that they are able to. Uh, they're, they're not they're not going to be judged negatively if they fail. They're allowed to try things and they learn from them. It's kind of like learning about what's happening and what's next. Um, that they're also not only trying to get things done, but they want to do not, they don't want to just do things, they want to do the right things. And those right things can change going forward. They are accepting change. People come in and say, we're going to move, we're going to cancel this product project, even though you're invested in it, you right away feel because you're in a culture that has a very strong, it's a strong culture that's healthy. You say, well, that was my old project anyway, what's next? Give me a new one. I want to do something else. I want to succeed. I want to be a winner. Um, and that's that's the high performance and adaptive culture together that leads to very strong and positive performance. Those kind of business, those kind of cultures, unfortunately, are relatively rare. Oftentimes, you have these unhealthy cultures where people don't want to change; they want everything to be the same. I've always been that way. Why do I have to change? It's worked in the past. Why do I have to change now? It's very more inward focused. Um, People are promoted because of who they know or who they have lunch with or who they play golf with. This is politicized cultures. I may do the very best job in the world, but I don't golf. My boss golfs, and they have a golf buddy who sits beside me, doesn't do any work, but they chat on the golf course, have drinks after golf, and he gets promoted, right? Those are the sorts of things that create this sort of negative environment for people. Why bother working? It doesn't matter because it's who you know and who you golf with, and that's not really the company. So those are politicized cultures. Um, you may have very inwardly focused, I only worry about myself. That makes it really hard to change, right? Because you're not aware that the outside world is changing. I've always done it this way. They're bureaucratic, if you will. <clears throat> and that can create uh, change problems as well. 
And then you can also just have cultures that are corrupt. They're unethical. People are taking advantage of the company. They leave early. Uh, the golf example I was giving you before, maybe they're golfing on company time and saying it's a meeting, but the people they're with don't have anything to do with what they're working on. Um, or greed-driven cultures where people just try to make as much money as they possibly can and they uh, fight among each other. And that gets to this other possibility where you have some subcultures that just don't get along. Finance doesn't get along with marketing. There are organizations like that where marketing won't tell finance the numbers because the finance people come in and all they do is complain and pick and pick at what the issues are and they don't all they want to do is cut costs you know so they don't they don't really uh, they're not compatible in their cultures and so they actually don't get along and they don't talk to each other and that could all be very negative these kind of cultures very difficult to transform because first of all they don't want to change they're happy with what they're doing and they're very focused on success at their local job and they don't want to get involved with anyone else. It can be very risky. And these are the sorts of things you have to watch out for as you're trying to create the kind of environment that organizations need in order to not only do well today, what's called an ambidextrous organization, you can do two things at once. You can be good at what you're doing today, but you could also change going forward. And that's what we'll talk about in the last lecture in this series and actually the last lecture of the class which is on the leadership environment, how one builds an organizational leadership platform, how one builds the values, not just from the top, but throughout the organization. So everyone is leading, everyone knows how to lead and what they're trying to accomplish. And we'll talk about that in our next video.